Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from CRT Designs and today I have a Distress Oxide Ink Blended Floral Card to share with you. So let's jump right in. And we are going to start with the blending. So I have a piece of hammer mill cardstock here and currently everything will be A2 sized. So that's four and a quarter by five and a half. This is a piece of hammer mill cardstock I have cut to that A2 size and then the black piece that I bring in to white heat emboss on will also start out as the A2 size. So I'm going to blend on three of my favorite Distress Oxide ink colors. I have Salvage Patina here, and then I'm going to go into Wilted Violet, and then into Villainous Potion. So I like to use the domed blending foams because I do find that they give you a lot more of a consistent blend, um, mostly because I think that with the domed foam, you're less likely to create those circle marks as you set the tool down because it's not flat. Um, at least I have found that. I mean, everybody's personal preference is going to come into play here. But I have been asked in the past, uh, like some tips and, and hints to blending. And I find that the dome foams is definitely one of the ways to get a, the most consistent blending. Uh, also, your cardstock, of course, matters because it needs to be a smoother cardstock for a more consistent blend. Um, and I find that if you have a tool that's saturated in ink like the foams are, they blend better. So you're going to see here because the Villainish Potion is a newer color to me, um, it doesn't blend on quite as quickly and as nicely as the other two colors did just because I've been blending with them for longer. So their foams have more ink actually saturated into the foam. So it takes me a bit more work, even though this is like a brand new, well, it's not brand new color. It's been out for a little bit, but uh, it's a newer color and uh, it doesn't uh, quite blend on as nicely. I have to work a bit harder to get it to blend. And I'm sorry that my camera is bouncing around there. It does that a little bit when I blend just because it's attached to the desk. But I do love how this turned out. These are four, or I said you guys earlier, these are three of my favorite colors. Uh, purple is my ultimate favorite color. And then teal is just always stunning with pretty much everything you put it with. So that is kind of why I chose those colors specifically. And then I brought in the Simon Says Stamp Sketched Flowers stamp. It's another large, large floral that I really like. Um, I, of course, very drawn to large floral, large, large, <laughs> large florals. And I'm going to stamp that down in my Misty. The Misty is necessary for what we're kind of trying to achieve here. Um, you could attempt this with a stamp block, but I don't, I don't know how well it would turn out simply because we need each layer to go in the exact same position. So I use my Misty for that specifically, and I have it set three blocks up from the bottom. So I know where it needs to sit. So I stamped it out on my first colored, my, my colored panel. And now this is the base because I wanted to stamp both the colored panel and the base in the VersaFine Onyx black ink. It's just this super crisp, beautiful black ink. I also love how it looks on oxides and you guys can kind of see it I mean now it's wet at the moment so it's shinier anyways but I'll, I'll show you in the end when the panel is completely dry it just it has this really neat sheen to it on top of the oxide inks that I love so I stamped the back or that's the pan the base sorry and then I'm going to clean the stamp really well with my stamp chamois because now we're going to heat emboss it onto that black panel so this panel again is all they're all a2 sized at this time at this moment in time and I'm going to white heat emboss it so my thought was kind of that the image would continue across the three pieces of cardstock now I couldn't stamp black on black because you wouldn't be able to see it and that would kind of defeat it being stamped on the uh, black cardstock. So you wouldn't have to do this in white. You could have done it in a different color. It's just that my base is white. So I was kind of pulling more of that white into the image. And I did miss a little area on the image, but it doesn't really matter simply because we do trim this down in a second. So I grabbed my um, Alabaster White Embossing Powder by Brutus Monroe. It is one of my favorite whites. And my fan is on, so of course I'm like trying to put my body in the way of the um, embossing powder so it doesn't fly all over the place. It's hot here, so I have my fan on. <laughs> what can I say? And I just flick it off of there and then that's pretty much again this doesn't need to be perfect right we did use the anti-static powder tool to make sure that i didn't have too much extra embossing 
powder where I don't need it, which is what you see in the background with that kind of weird dusty look on the cardstock. But we're going to wipe that off and it's going to look perfectly fine. So I'm going to heat set it. And yes, I'm going to show it. I know it. It's just magical to me, guys. Like I just I love watching embossing powder melt. It's probably one of my favorite things to do in uh, crafting. It just it it's always magical. I don't know why. I've been doing this for a while now and I've been making videos for ooh, two and a half years. So I mean, I emboss a lot of things, but I just every time it still makes me happy. So I like to show it. So now we're going to trim it down. Uh, and if you've been with me for a minute, you know that I don't measure things, so I don't know the exact size, but I'm going to say that I believe that the black panel ends up being about a quarter of an inch smaller than the A2 base, okay? So I'm going to show you here where I'm kind of holding it up because I'm trying to line it up where it needs to go with the image in the background. And you can see that it doesn't have a huge border. Then I'm going to bring in my colored panel and I'm going to say that I probably cut this down to be about a half an inch smaller than my A2 base. Now again, I kind of guesstimate, so uh, I don't have the exact measurements for you. If you guys want, you can uh, leave me a comment in the description below and I can actually bring out a ruler and measure the layers that are on the card. But if it doesn't matter to you, I honestly just kind of end up eyeballing. And then here I'm just lining it up to see how much I've actually trimmed off. And then I'm going to take a, just a smidge back off of the bottom colored part. We are going to stamp the sentiment on that colored base as well. So that's where we're going to add that really cool sentiment. I should have maybe stamped that beforehand, but I wasn't totally sure what I wanted to uh, use as the sentiment. So I lift it until the end. And I'm going to put a good amount of glue on this because I need it to move around until I can line it up where I want it. Um, if you can serve the glue, which I mean, you absolutely could do if you're more sure of your placement. But if you need to wiggle it around, the more glue you have on the back, the more wiggle time you end up with. Now, don't like, you know, make it wet with glue because then your cardstock will start to warp. Although I do tend towards very heavy cardstocks for my cards. My bases are generally 100 to 110 to 120 pounds depending on what I'm doing that black cardstock I think is like 100 and 120 pounds in there somewhere my hammer mill is 100 100 pounds so I, I do generally go towards heavier cardstock just so that I don't have warping issues especially with glue but personal preference use what you have of course you guys know that I'm a big believer in using what you have in your stash or using stuff you haven't used recently that is one of the things that I really stand for because we buy more than we necessarily need to use so I do. I mean, don't get me wrong. I buy new stuff. It, it's like, <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't mention it to my husband, but the new Halloween Tim Holtz is about to come out. So, you know, got to get me some of that. But I did use the stamp from, this is the Tim Holtz Noteworthy stamp set. I just got it. I'm super excited about it. I love the sentiments in it. So I used that and just stamped it down on the yeah, a card that is my sentiment it says collect beautiful moments. And I just thought that that was just a really lovely thing to say. So I thought that would really fun on the card. And then I did bring in some uh, vanilla luster sequins and I'm just going to kind of adhere them around. Now, at this point, I decided that nothing specifically stood out about this card. So to kind of rectify that, I brought in a clear glitter pen by Spectrum Noir and I'm going to color in just this one floral in the center of the card. And this is going to catch your eye because oxides are water reactive. It will lighten up the color. And of course, it adds a tremendous amount of shimmer. You don't need to use the shimmer if you don't want to. You could, of course, just bring in clean, clear water. <clears throat> excuse me, and it would give you the same kind of effect. This is just kind of bleaching the color out a bit. And, and just creating that really cool oxidized color, which, I mean, you see me cleaning it off often to, on the side there because the oxide will lift. So instead of just m like mopping the color around the flower petals, I do wipe the, the pen off so that I'm not worried about like getting more of the purple into the teal and kind of losing that teal color. But like I said, you don't have to use glitter. I just like all the shiny things. So I feel like everything needs glitter. But this is just really bleaching the color to get a lighter version of it so that it's more eye catching. So that's kind of what I thought with this. And here you'll see it. Like once I tip that in the light, doesn't that look stunning? Like I'm just so in love with it. And then one of the pieces that I cut off, of course, I had to adhere inside because I'd hate to waste it. But I thought this card turned out really pretty. It's a more simple card for me, but I love it. I think it's super pretty. I would love to know what you guys think of this card and consider leaving me a like leave me a comment and I hope that you'll consider subscribing. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday. Thank you so much guys and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.